Well, hey guys, today I'm talking about the role of zinc in your immune health. You've probably heard about zinc and how important it is. In fact, we know about 25% of the world's population is very zinc deficient because they don't have diets that uh, offer enough zinc for their bodies. But I also find, and, and most of those people that they're talking about are in third world countries where they don't have access to possibly a lot of meat and animal products, seafood that has high amounts of zinc. However, what I've found is that many people in Western countries, right, first world countries, are also very zinc deficient, okay? But it's more of a subclinical zinc deficiency where they don't have uh, really pronounced effects of zinc deficiency, but they still have a lot of symptoms, symptoms such as um, lower libido, okay? Zinc plays a really big and important role in um, your overall sex hormone production, testosterone, progesterone, estrogen. Uh, for some people, they have a lot of skin issues. So eczema, dermatitis, different things like that can be related to zinc. Um, also issues with like, for example, estrogen dominance, uh, low testosterone, like I talked about some of these kind of hormonal issues. Getting frequent colds, fevers, and flus, right? That's another sign of a possible zinc deficiency. Zinc is really, really critical for your immune system. I'm gonna talk more about that as we get going here. Um, white, kind of white uh, types of uh, discolorations on your fingernails can be an issue with zinc deficiency. So these are all things that we have to look for when it comes to zinc. Uh, zinc also plays a very important role in your taste, your ability to taste, your ability to smell. So a lot of people, for example, when they get upper respiratory issues, they lose the ability to smell and taste. Um, and this oftentimes can be because the body's going through so much zinc. In fact, when we encounter infection, we start to deplete a lot of our zinc levels. And so it's, it's really key. So zinc, when it comes to the immune system, a couple things are going on here. Zinc really helps with the development of the thymus and the T cells. T cells are really important for part of your innate immune response, your kind of intracellular immune response, and they help with calming down the immune system. You've heard of like T helper, T regulatory cells, and then you also have cytotoxic T cells. So all of these really, really depend on good zinc status in order to be able to perform their function at their best. And so when we don't have that, we're often more susceptible to viral infections, intracellular types of infections go on the rise. And then on top of that, we're also more susceptible to autoimmunity because we don't have good T regulatory and T helper cell function. And so those things help calm down the immune system. So when we start creating inflammation, one of the pathways in our body, it's called nuclear factor kappa beta or NFKB, gets really activated and amplified and this sending out this inflammatory message. So zinc has a role in really helping to modulate or balance the inflammatory message because it activates something called interferon alpha, which helps to tame the NFKB pathway, right? It tends to be uh, anti-inflammatory and uh, really calms the immune system down and allows it to be able to function at its, at its best and at its peak. So zinc is really important for that. Zinc stops viral replication, right? So this interferon helps with stopping viral replication. This is so critical. You know, in today's day and age, we hear a lot about viral loads, right? Well, what's a way that we reduce viral load? We stop the virus from replicating. Zinc is so critical for that. So we really wanna make sure we get our zinc levels where they're supposed to be. And I'm gonna go over numbers here in just a minute. Um, but you know, zinc also plays a, a critical role in your superoxide dismutase levels, which is a, a critical antioxidant that lives within the cells that helps protect against DNA damage. So we call it SOD, superoxide dismutase, helps protect against the damage to the DNA. It also, zinc also plays a role in glutathione production. So both of those help protect our DNA. And so when we don't have good enough zinc, we end up getting more DNA damage. And when we have DNA damage, that increases the amount of abnormal, abnormal cells that are growing. So when we think about a condition like cancer, it's an overgrowth of these sorts of abnormal cells. And so zinc can help protect against that. Zinc also helps with activating uh, certain, certain uh, gene pathways that protect, that are like a security guard for the DNA. For example, the P53 gene, 
Uh, so zinc plays a really important role in the function of the P53 gene, which helps protect the genome within the cell, right? So it's like a security guard in there. There was a 2012 study where they took all these women with the BRCA gene, BRCA gene, which increases your risk or your likelihood of developing breast cancer if you have a mutation there. The BRCA gene is actually a protective gene. It helps protect against DNA damage in you know, the breast cells. And so um, what they found was that they looked at zinc status for all these different individuals. The people, the women with the highest amount of zinc had the lowest amount of mutations going on to their DNA and a lower likelihood of developing breast cancer, even though they all had the BRCA gene. And so if that's the case, obviously we realize zinc is so critical for helping prevent against a lot of these types of conditions, autoimmune conditions, cancer, chronic infections, so critical. So there was a 2019 study that actually looked at zinc and its role in viral replication. And what they found is that really all viruses across the board Zinc creates these metalloproteins, which within the cell help block the virus from replicating. They hijack the DNA and RNA messages coming from our cellular components, and they utilize that to help replicate themselves. And so they basically cause disease within a cell, and then they cause those cells to replicate. Well, zinc helps stop that process, which is super critical. And in today's day and age, we're talking about viral loads. Viral loads, you hear this all the time, especially when it comes to infecting other people. Well, how do we stop the viral loads? What do we do is we get zinc levels where they need to be. We optimize zinc levels, and that's gonna reduce your viral load. And this study showed all different types of viruses uh, that zinc is going to help basically reduce the, the ability for the virus to replicate. So where do we want our blood levels of zinc to be? Well, I look at your plasma zinc levels and you can get that tested on a blood test, plasma zinc, and it should be between roughly 90 and 135 on the measurement there. And then your serum copper is another critical measurement because zinc and copper are competing at all times. And you don't want your copper to be too high or too low. That copper should be roughly 70 to 110 and then your ratio of plasma zinc to serum copper should be roughly 1 to 1.2, meaning you should have at least equal parts plasma zinc to serum copper, or maybe a little bit more zinc than copper. That's really, really critical. Now, the reason why you may be deficient, you may not have enough zinc, you may have a lot of these zinc deficiency symptoms, is for a number of reasons. Number one, you may not be consuming enough zinc-rich foods. What are the best zinc-rich foods? That's gonna be seafood, okay? Seafood in general is amazing sources of zinc, so fish, um, if you're eating shellfish, like oysters and things like that, super high sources of zinc. Uh, from plant sources, pumpkin seeds are one of your very best plant sources. Grass-fed beef, so from animal sources, eggs, grass-fed beef, poultry, all rich in zinc. Um, you know, from plant-based sources, again, you know, some green vegetables, some uh, nuts, things like that. However, nuts and seeds also have phytic acids, which can also block absorption of zinc. So really not the best sources. Animal-based sources are definitely the best. So your grass-fed meats, your eggs, your wild-caught seafood, that's going to be your best sources of zinc. Now, you may have issues with stomach acid production. You actually need to be able to produce a good amount of stomach acid to be able to absorb zinc. And if you're not producing that stomach acid, you're gonna have issues. So normally our acid levels in our stomach are roughly between three to 3.5 at rest. Now, if you remember from basic chemistry, your neutral pH is about seven. In order for us to digest protein effectively and really absorb key minerals like zinc, we need to get our stomach acid roughly down to around 1.5 to 2.2 during the meal. So it's very energy demanding. We've gotta really be able to produce a lot of stomach acid. For some people, they struggle with that. So a couple things you can do, take some deep breaths before a meal, right? That Just that act alone will get your body into a parasympathetic mode, which will help you digest your food more effectively, produce more stomach acid, absorb more of the key minerals magnesium, zinc, iron, vitamin B12, things like that from the food that you're consuming. So that's critical. You also can take some apple cider vinegar before a meal, right? So take a little apple cider vinegar, 
put it in some water, drink that before a meal, like one tablespoon in about four ounces of water, drink that before your meal, that will help activate your stomach acid. You could also take like some ginger root or sip on some ginger tea. Ginger is great for helping stimulate stomach acid production. So that's another great idea. And when you eat your meat, right, which is your best source of zinc, I recommend eating it in the beginning of the meal because that's actually when you should have the most amount of stomach acid and it will drop to the bottom of your stomach where the acid will concentrate as opposed to if you fill up on vegetables, now the vegetables fill up your stomach and the meat drops on top and all the acid is right in here, okay? It's breaking down the vegetables but not getting to the meat so by the time the meat falls down in your stomach, uh, the acid is less potent. So very important, you know, try to eat your meat earlier in the meal. So drink a little bit of ginger tea or apple cider vinegar, um, and then eat the meat. And that way you get the zinc, you get the protein breakdown. So stomach acid is key. You also wanna keep your blood sugar stable. When your blood sugar's all over the place, you deplete zinc. Chronic stress depletes zinc. Chronic infections, so if you are getting you know, in an environment where for whatever reason you're getting a lot of infections, you are gonna deplete zinc faster. So, you know, a month ago, you may have had sufficient levels of zinc, maybe you were supplementing, maybe you weren't, then you got an infection, you stopped taking zinc for whatever reason, um, and that depleted your zinc levels, okay? So very important that we're addressing that. And if you have a history, let's say of uh, maybe cold sores, or maybe HIV, or, um, you know, an STD or something like that, taking zinc can be really, really helpful for that. If you have skin warts, uh, that's, another, that's a, a, another type of virus, right? So we wanna take zinc, right? We wanna make sure that you're getting your zinc and you can test it. I recommend testing it twice a year on labs. Again, looking at your plasma zinc, serum copper, right? And looking at that ratio, making sure that that's r roughly one to 1.2. Now we talked about zinc rich foods. Here's the thing, in nature, we get zinc and copper together. All the best zinc rich foods are also rich in copper. The issue though is we absorb copper better, right? It's easier to absorb copper than it is zinc, right? Zinc is actually harder for us to absorb. We need more of that stomach acid to be able to absorb it. We also utilize it faster, especially if we're you know, encountering viruses and things like that. So supplementing with zinc can be really helpful. I like zinc that's chelated to an amino acid, which really helps it get into the system and be absorbed more effectively. My favorite is zinc glycinate. That seems to work really good for high level absorption. So we wanna utilize that. And I typically will have people do somewhere around 20 to 30 milligrams of zinc a day. And ideally you're taking that with a meal if you don't take it with a meal, for some people, they get nauseous, okay? And that's because, again, zinc, you really need that stomach acid to absorb. So take that with a meal, 20 to 30 milligrams a day. If you are encountering, you know, some sort of an immune crisis, uh, you might take 20 to 30 milligrams two to three times a day with meals in order to really help get that zinc level up. Another way you can do zinc is through lozenges. And a lot of people really like doing that. I've got a great one, it's the elderberry zinc lozenge, okay, which this is what I give my kids if I feel like they are susceptible to having some sort of an illness, right? It's got 100 milligrams of elderberry in here, as well as 25 milligrams of zinc. This is in uh, a zinc citrate and gluconate form, which are these amino acid chelates that help it. So it tastes good, this is flavored with monk fruit, um, so it has a good flavor to it and you get the elderberry. And elderberry is very rich in quercetin, vitamin C, and anthocyanins, uh, as well as uh, different minerals like magnesium. And so it's very, very good for your body, very good for your immune system. And that's a great combination to really help support your immunity. So hopefully this was, uh, was good for you guys, right? Zinc is so critical. Um, also, one thing I didn't talk about is the zinc tally test. Okay, zinc tally test. And what I'll do is I'll put in a link for a video uh, that you could check out that uh, where I go over how to do the zinc tally test, which is basically you order this liquid zinc assay and you drink it. Okay, now normally, if you have uh, sufficient zinc levels, it will taste kind of metallic and not so good. You should be able to taste it. If you can't taste it, that's a sign that you don't have enough zinc. So that's an at-home test that you could try to see where your zinc levels are. 
outside of getting the blood work done. So check that out. Guys, thanks so much for staying with us. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do. And uh, also check out, I've got a coupon code for any products that you want, like the elderberry zinc. It's Jockers10. Use that at checkout to get 10% off your order. If you haven't hit the bell button, now is the time to do that. that. That allows you to get notified whenever I put up a new video. So check that out, and we'll see you guys in a future video. Be blessed.